Welcome to Location, a local news program. I'm Patrick Gallagher. And I'm Melissa Menser, and here's your news now. And these are your top stories in the Loquitur. For students looking to explore relationships with God, themselves, and others, the annual search retreat takes place during the spring semester. Led by Campus Ministry, the retreat offers students the opportunity to meet others. After attending the retreat, students then have the opportunity to become next year's retreat leaders. Although it is too late to drop a class, there is still time to withdraw. Many students confuse dropping and withdrawing from a class. Withdrawals show up on a student's transcript with a W and do not affect GPA. However, withdrawing can count against financial aid and residency. Colleges are organizing green teams across the United States. In order to bring all of the sustainable actions, Cabrini College decided that a green team should exist. The green team consists of faculty and students that work together to keep the college green. The last meeting informed attendees about the three departments in college that are currently involved, which are facilities, dining services, and purchasing. Cabrini's pastor, Father Carl Janicki, along with President George and Vice President Neal, attended a conference in Washington, D.C. for the Association for Catholic Colleges and Universities annual conference last month. ACCU's mission is to assist Catholic higher education institutions in the country to strengthen character and act as a communal voice. The representatives from Cabrini who attended were able to get ideas on improving the college as well as to help other colleges do the same. And those were your top stories in the Loquitur. The winter storms have come and gone, but who really makes the decisions on school closing and delays? Location has an inside look on the winter storm's madness. I'm Danielle Alia for Location, where we have seen our fair share of snow and ice these past few weeks. But what exactly is the process of declaring a snow day? Location had the opportunity to talk to Howard Holden, Director of Facilities, about this process. The college has an emergency closing procedure. Uh, it involves more than just snow. It could be any significant campus event. But that procedure usually in a snow event starts out with public safety. Uh, public safety will call our grounds manager if uh, they sense that the conditions on campus are getting slippery. Uh, the grounds manager will come in and he'll assess the condition of the campus. And if he uh, feels that the conditions are bad or getting worse, he'll call his crew in. Uh, he will then also call me and advise me as to what he is experiencing. At that point, I'll go on websites and weather channels and whatnot and try to figure out the, uh, the condition of the storm, how long it's going to last, uh, what the total accumulation might be. And then I call uh, Dr. Sclater, the VP for Academic Affairs. And she and I discuss um, you know, what the weather conditions are, what other schools are doing, uh, the conditions on campus, and whether or not that the grounds crew feels as though that they'll have the campus open and ready in time for the first classes. After that discussion, we'll come to some sort of mutual understanding, and she'll make that recommendation to the president, to Dr. George. And then Dr. George and her will sometimes tweak it a little bit, whatever the suggestion was. Uh, Dr. Sclater gets back to me and uh, advises me as to what they have decided. Uh, at that time, I call the grounds manager and let him know what the decision has been. I'll also call public safety and the director of, of public safety. Uh, and Lil Burroughs will then send out a text message declaring what, whether it's a one-hour delay, two-hour delay, or class is canceled. Um, at that point, I'll also call the director of administrative services, and she'll change the phone message, and then I also uh, call the director of marketing and media. Uh, she puts the, uh, the notice on the website. Then lastly, I call KYW and Channel 29 News and uh, inform them of our, our decision. Uh, from that point on, it's, it's really up to the grounds crew and the facilities crew. If it's a light snow, the grounds crew can handle it. If it's a, an ice event or a significant amount of snow, such as we've had recently, We've had the whole department out there on the street clearing ice and snow. Um, 
several weeks ago, there was so much snow that even though we had cleared it, we had to call outside contractors in to help us remove the snow from campus such that if we get another snow, we have a place to put the new fallen snow. So it's, uh, that's kind of the whole, the whole process. This particular year, for example, we've put in about 920 hours of overtime um, just in January, and we've gone through about 72 tons of salt. So you can kind of get an idea as to how laborious this, this particular winter has been. So the next time that there is a snow closure, you know the whole story behind the television stations, the website, and that text message that wakes you up at 5 a.m. Since it's only February, I'm sure there's more to come. For Location, I'm Danielle Alio. Now back to the studio. Element 6 Media provides a green alternative to traditional advertising, and they were in Philadelphia during the recent snowstorm. Let's take a look at this new exciting medium of advertising. Last week, Philadelphia was briefly home to a commercial snow mural. The firm, Element 6 Media, makes sustainable advertisements through natural resources. In this case, snow. It's a new way of thinking, really. Instead of just using paper or all the materials that we're used to, we're actually encouraging everybody to think slightly different with all the natural mediums that we have. And uh, So nothing is long-lived, everything is short, but that's the whole purpose of it. We use um, all, only natural uh, mediums, such as sand, water, snow, ice, um, greenery, grass. We're going to do a grass mural in Denver in three weeks from now. We're going to do a large advertisement out of ice in Minneapolis in two weeks from now. We just did a large beach advertisement uh, in the sand that was the size of a football field on Venice Beach last weekend. So it's just a different way of thinking. So hopefully we'll be up till about noon tomorrow. And then we just want nature to take over and take it away. No trace left and all is gone. The mural was made to promote a contest for the Green Awards. They are seeking ideas for sustainability, and the top prize is $25,000 for the best idea. On location in the heart of Philadelphia, I'm Chris Sarvati, back to the studio. Each Monday, the Health Hut is set up in the cafeteria as part of Healthy Mondays. Let's find out some more information about the Health Hut. My job at the Health Hut is to promote wellness information, and each week there is new information handed out. So the Health Hut is part of the Office of Health and Wellness, which offers information each Monday. Um, they run the Healthy Monday program, which encourages students to go meatless on Monday, and the Healthy Monday program, there is also a walk involved with Jess Huda each week where students, faculty, and staff can meet at the Health Hut at 11.30 for a mile walk around campus or in the Dixon Center, depending on the weather. There's tons of giveaways and different um, you know, gift cards pretty often when students fill out health, uh, surveys. Once a month, the Office of Health and Wellness offers a Make It Monday cooking demonstration with Chef Peters. Students, faculty, and staff can participate in the demonstrations and, of course, enjoy a sample. Each month, um, he will be making healthy fish, a heart-healthy pasta, cold turkey sandwiches, and cooking with lemons. So it's a really great way to learn how to prepare your foods in a healthy way. Make sure to stop by the Health Hut every Monday in the Marketplace. Check out the link below for more information. I'm Megan McSloy on location. Back to you at the news desk. This past Sunday, February 6th, a Super Bowl party was held in the Roymans Activity Center, known as The Rack, here on campus. Let's check in with Allie Jeter to learn more. Hey everyone, I'm Allie on location here at The Rack, ready to kick off Super Bowl 45. So why did you guys um, host a pregame? Um, basically to get people out of the dorm before they ran off and had Super Bowl parties with their friends, I suppose. Kind of use the rack a little bit because it's a new activity center. Yeah. And free pizza is always good. Yeah. yeah see. Free food. <laughs> That's the staple of all of our events. <laughs> Now, is this for like any club on campus? Or are you guys a part of it? Um, we are um, the director, of, we're co-directors of weekend events for CAP Board, which is the programming board on campus. So basically we just program different events um, every weekend. This is, you know, the Super Bowl, might as well have an event around it. How's the party so far? It's all right. 
It's pretty cool. How's the food? Honestly, there is no food, I guess. Why? I got here late, so I guess everybody ate it before I got here. I don't is know. Is that a problem? Kind of, because I'm a little bit hungry, I'm not going to lie. I'm definitely a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. My favorite player is Troy Palamo. Why? Um, his hair, obviously. <laughs> really, I really like his hair. Um, I think he seems like a decent player. I wish my Steelers were doing better. They're, they're falling behind. They only got three points, and I need them to have more than that. I need my boys to win. Sorry, Jamie, but it isn't looking good for the Steelers. Since the food was gone and people went their separate ways, we moved to East Residence Hall for the conclusion of the game. How's the game so far? Um, pretty awful. Steelers aren't winning. Really mad about it. So you're a Steelers fan? Yes, all the way. <laughs> In the end, the Green Bay Packers triumphed over the Pittsburgh Steelers 31-25. Reporting for location, I'm Allie Jeter. Now let's take a trip around the world. The demonstrations against President Mubarak's government in Egypt are shaking the relationship between one of America's most important allies. It is also shaking up a 60-year-old alliance with Israel. The Obama administration is urging Israel to chill out. The question of how the U.S. will navigate its relationship with Israel still remains. On Wednesday, President Mubarak struck back on his opponents by sending his supporters out armed with clubs, knives, rocks, and firebombs. Shots were fired on protesters, but it's unsure whether the shots came from pro-government demonstrators or the military forces. Two people were killed and 45 injured in the gunfire. Leaders of Egyptian democracy vowed to, on Sunday to escalate their pressure for President Mubarak's resignation. The government announced that transitions have begun with a meeting between Egyptians' vice president and two representatives of the Muslim Brotherhood. The Brotherhood, which is the largest opposition force in Egypt, issued a statement on Thursday asking President Mubarak to step aside. The Obama administration spoke cautiously about the future of the Brotherhood. The Muslim Brotherhood might emerge as a powerful political force in a post-Mubarak government. The Brotherhood, which was founded in 1928, is one of the oldest Islamic movements in the world. And now is your trip around the world. Valentine's Day is just days away. Let's take a look at what students have planned. For Valentine's Day, I am going out with my friends, and we're going to exchange gifts because, you know, you only need friends, and who needs guys anyways? Valentine's Day, I'm hanging out with my boyfriend, probably watching some sappy romantic movie and eating every piece of chocolate available. Valentine's Day, I'm probably going to be uh, crying myself to sleep because I don't have any Valentines, and uh, just probably watching a movie or something because I won't have anyone to hang out with. Valentine's Day can go either two ways. I can be on a date with this guy that I'm talking to, or I will be watching movies with my roommate, Victoria. The top five picks for 2011 include flowers, chocolate, love letter, diamonds, and a romantic dinner. This Valentine's Day, find a gift that gives back to the world. Get a box of fair trade chocolates, bouquet from Teleflora, or conflict-free diamonds. I hope you all have a good Valentine's Day. For location, I'm Jenny Verghese. Now back to you at the news desk. And now I'll check in with Holly for sports. Did you get that doubleheader on Monday night, Holly? Actually, I did, Pat. This past Monday, the men's and women's basketball teams played in a doubleheader at Gwen and Mercy College. Both teams were successful in defeating the Griffins. The men's team overpowered the Griffins, beating them 84-73. to This win marked the Cavs' fourth consecutive victory against the Griffins. In the game, senior Don Farello scored a career-high 25 points and added 7 rebounds, and sophomore Corey Lemons also chipped in with 14 points for the Cavs. The Lady Cavs defeated the Griffins 66-62 in overtime Monday night. In the contest, freshman Brittany Sandone netted a team-high 18 points, while sophomore Melissa Kudzmas scored a career-high 12 points for the Lady Cavs. Both teams are set to take on Rosemont College in a doubleheader beginning at 6 p.m. on Thursday night at the Nerney Fieldhouse. In other Cabrini sports news, senior Matt McGurman and freshman Breanne Smith have been named to the Allegheny Mountain Collegiate Conference Best of the Rest list for their performances at Rowan University. McGurman posted a first place finish in the 100-yard breaststroke, while Smith recorded a first place finish in the 1650-yard freestyle. In professional sports news, the Green Bay Packers won Super Bowl 45 
31 to 25 against the Pittsburgh Steelers and mark their first Super Bowl win since 1997. Let's check in with Ali Rodolico to see what Cabrini students had to say about the Packers win. Hey guys, I'm Ali Rodolico here on location and today we're going to be getting the reactions of Cabrini students on Super Bowl 45. So, what did you think of Super Bowl 45? Uh, I thought it was pretty good, actually. I was a little worried that the uh, Steelers were going to come back, but uh, luckily, you know, the Packers pulled it out, so that was a good one. So, what team were you rooting for for the Super Bowl this year? Pittsburgh Steelers. Why is that? Well, my uh, parents were born in Pittsburgh, and uh, it kind of got me on that team. So, were you sad that they lost? Eh, not really. So, there's a lot of controversy over the halftime show. What did you think of it? I mean, I'm going to be honest, I really thought it was terrible. Um, I thought the Black Eyed Peas could have done a lot better. I mean, I thought they're, they're kind of one of those bands that I feel like is only good when you're listening to them on a CD, you know what I mean, live. I feel like there's too much technology involved with their sound. So I think they're terrible. Um, I thought Slash came out, though. He was awesome. I love Slash as a guitarist. But, um, yeah, I thought altogether Black Eyed Peas really ruined it all. So, yeah. So what did you think of the outcome of the game? Um, the game was good. Um, it was a good game to the, to the end. Um, I had the Steelers winning, but they lost. All right, thank you. Ben, so I was cheering for the Packers the whole time, even though they beat the Eagles to get there. I'm really proud of Aaron Rodgers. So. All right, thank you. Well, that's all we have for this week. I'm Allie Rodolico. Back to you at the news desk. Thanks, Allie. That's all I have for you this week. Tune in next week for more sports coverage. Thanks, Allie. So listen, did you see that Super Bowl? Christina Aguilera totally choked. I did see it, but Danielle has more information, so let's check in with her now. Hey guys, Danielle here with your entertainment news. It's no secret that Christina Aguilera didn't exactly study the lyrics to the Star Spangled Banner before this year's Super Bowl performance. So what did Christina have to say about her mistake? Well, according to sources, Aguilera released a statement saying, I got so caught up in the moment of the song that I lost my place. I can only hope that everyone can feel my love for this country and that the true spirit of the anthem still came through. The Oscars are coming up. Let's see what people have to say about some of the nominations. On Sunday, February 27th, Anne Hathaway and James Franco host the 83rd Academy Awards, a.k.a. the Oscars. The nominations for Best Film are Black Swan, The Fighter, Inception, The Kids Are All Right, The King's Speech, 127 Hours, The Social Network, Toy Story 3, True Grit, and Winter's Bone. Let's hear what some students and faculty have to say about the nominees should win because it's a really good movie it blew my mind it was crazy but I had to watch it a couple times to fully like grasp everything that was going on in my opinion Black Swan should win everything hey I saw a lot of the movies that are running up for best film and I think it's a close tie between Toy Story 3 and the Black Swan but the Black Swan should definitely take home the Oscar I thought Inception was a good movie it was my movie it was my favorite movie of the summer it was different you know not a lot of movies um, speak about dreams for the Oscar for the best movie, I think Toy Story 3 should win because it was really cute and really funny. I recently saw Salt. It was a pretty good movie. It kind of kept you guessing as to what was going on, so I liked that. Um, I also recently saw Inception, which I found confusing. Hey, Toy Story 3 should definitely be the winner. It was a really good movie uh, and just brought all three of those, like the other first two, in a complete circle. So I was crying at the end, I'll admit it. Now that we've heard what their opinions are, Find out if your favorite will win on Sunday, February 27th at 8 p.m. on ABC. This is Lauren Sleva on location. In other news, the Real Housewives of New York have postponed their premiere of the newest season until spring, leaving fans to wonder why. It's time to stop wondering and start questioning because apparently Camille Grammer is rumored to be making her way onto the series, leaving Beverly Hills behind. But wait, doesn't her ex-husband Kelsey Grammer live in New York? Wouldn't it be super awkward if they accidentally bumped into each other? Sounds like Camille is a good investment for Bravo after all. Well, uh, that's all I have for you this week. Tune in next week for more entertainment news. I'm Danielle McLaughlin, back to you at the news desk. Thanks, Danielle. And now let's check in with Ian for Just a Thought. Hi, it's Ian with Just a Thought. Like many Americans, I too watched the Super Bowl. And the game aside, I have to say this year's halftime show was the best. Kudos to the Black Eyed Peas for allowing embarrassed Cowboys fans to dance on the stage with milk crates on their heads. That right there, folks, is charity. And there were, no, and there were so many lights left up on the field, I expected Fergie's mom to barge in and yell at her to conserve power. I didn't understand much of the performance, but I did catch that at least this year's performers were all under the age of Methuselah. All in all, I love the Black Eyed Peas. I really do. I think Where is the Love is by far one of the greatest songs of the millennium. But I speak for everyone watching this past Sunday when I ask, where did Usher come from?
Now onto the other disappointment, the commercials. They were super serious. I just didn't find monkeys crashing junky cars amusing, and there were too many ads for cars and Fox. Speaking of Fox, I didn't understand what genius decided to air Glee right after the Super Bowl. To me, that's like putting WWE SmackDown right after the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Okay, never mind, that was a terrible comparison. Speaking of annoying teeny bobbers who think they can sing, when can I go about my day without seeing Justin Bieber? If you find out, please let me know. I mean, and that's just a thought. Thanks, Ian. Well, that's all we have time for you this week. Be sure to check us out at thelocator.com or subscribe to our podcast on iTunes. I'm Melissa Menser. And I'm Patrick Gallagher. Have a great weekend, Cabrini, and a happy Valentine's Day.